Verse 18, praying at all times in the, in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Um, I, have you, has anybody noticed that it says praying at all times with all prayer and supplication? Doesn't that feel redundant? Uh, I, it's amazing preaching that I will come up to a passage, even like we did for Armor of God last week, and just be like, I just have read over this a million times because I don't know why Paul would say pray with prayers and supplication. That makes no sense to me. But there is a purpose for this. And what's Paul's purpose? I think his purpose is this, that virtually everything in our human experience is appropriate material for prayer. And so ultimately what he is saying is, All kinds of prayers are appropriate no matter what it is, whether it's reflections or observations, fear and anger, guilt and sin, questions, doubts, needs, desires, praise, gratitude, suffering and death. There is nothing about the human existence that is excluded from a need of prayer. Have you ever thought about Psalms, which we're going to go back to here in a couple weeks, beginning Memorial Day weekend? Um, I think C.S. Lewis, he said that it sounds like the author is an, I think he said, somebody's going to, somebody will cry, an old woman calling out for compliments. Sounds like God, that he, he's portraying God as that person because he's just all over the board with the way in which he speaks about the Lord, the way he beseeches God, the way he comes before him. He's complaining, he's yelling, he's asking for deliverance. He's, he's just all over the place. All of those prayers are appropriate kinds of prayers. How many of you have ever thought, like, as you've walked this human experience, man, this prayer isn't big enough or important enough for me to bring it to God? It's like, oh, Lord, I'm going to Walmart today. Please help me to get that close parking spot. How many of you have done that before? Yeah. Please help me to get the one just right outside the handicap, but not too far, like, just that one. Like, as crazy it is because you are a believer in Jesus, God hears your prayer. Whether he answers you get that parking spot or not is another question. The beauty of it is, like, your prayer is heard before the throne of grace. No matter what, all kinds of prayers are appropriate. And so what I want us to do is I'm going to just kind of walk through what what it looks like to traditionally uh, walk through a... The, the steps of prayer or different kinds of prayer, and that is most appropriately, and, and, and I love this acronym, though I personally hate acronyms, uh, called ACTS, and it touches on virtually every kind of human experience that, is, that finds itself in need of prayer. The first one is for ACTS, A, is adoration, praising and worshiping the Lord for who He is. Ultimately, when we don't pray, it's because we have it all under control. I am the one who is the captain of my ship. I have life underneath my power, and I don't need your help. But when we start with adoration, we recognize God for who he is, for all of his attributes, for his holiness, for his majesty, for his love, for his power. We begin with that, and then we fall into our place with reverence and awe for the only one who is the creator and the sustainer of this world. And we recognize God for who he is, and we go, okay, you got this. I don't. I am where I am meant to be. I am the one you have saved. I am not the Savior. Do with me what you will. And it just lifts our eyes to things above rather than things below. The second thing Acts says is not just adoration, but also confession. Uh, Confession is the thing that we both love and we hate to do. Because in confession, we admit our sins and our shortcomings to slash before the Lord. It's an honest and humble acknowledgement of our rebellion, of our wrongdoing, of our coming up short, and a plea for forgiveness before the Lord, which when we confess our sins before the Lord, he is faithful and just to forgive. The reason why confession is such a double-edged sword for all of us is because it does a couple things. The first thing is when we confess and we truly lay out the places where we sin against God, what we're able to do is go, Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for these sins. No longer am I guilty because of them. 
No longer am I a slave to sin because of what you have done. No longer must I hide in shame, but I am free of them. And you will remember in the moment of confession, this is why I still need Jesus. He is my life. On the other hand, though, the reason why we hate confession is this. How many of you like to see how at times, how wretched you are? None of us. Literally, our whole society is set up at this point to avoid seeing our brokenness. Like, we just make excuses for our brokenness. We make excuses for our sin. We make excuses for our rebellion against God because we're afraid to lay it out because we've completely neglected the one who actually can, can forgive, that can actually free us from shame, that can bring us hope. Even we as Christians don't like it because we go, God, I should be further along than I am now. Why, why, have I, why, why do I feel like I've taken two steps? I should be at 24. Why do I keep taking two steps forward and one step back? What confession does is it goes, no, I know who I am before the Lord, and it's okay. Because God is still at work in me. He will be faithful to complete what he has begun in the day of Jesus when he returns and when he makes all things new. So do not be afraid to confess your sins because he knows. And he still loves you and he still cares for you. So we practice adoration. We practice confession. Then we practice thanksgiving. We express our gratitude to the Lord for his blessings, for his provision, for his acts of kindness. Ultimately, thanksgiving is an acknowledgement of God's goodness and his faithfulness in our lives, whether it's for the forgiveness of sins, whether it's for the meal that we have, the car that we drive, the fact that we live and you're going to the fact that we lived in a climate controlled environment most of the time. Like I don't know about how many of you, but last week if you were in the first service you were like, it is blazing hot in here. I got to get out of here. Then in second service, everyone was like, it is freezing in here. I've got to get out of here. (laughs) Like, what's funny is our, like, first world problem complaint should actually be lifted up in Thanksgiving. God, thank you that this is what I have to complain about. Right? (laughs) Like, first world problems, people. Man, thank you that we are, first service, I joked, Thank you, Lord, that uh, it's the 9 o'clock service, and we're going to go have brunch after this, which is a meal between breakfast and lunch, which is insane. Have you ever thought about that? You know what? Lunch and, and breakfast and lunch are not enough. We need to add one in the middle. We're like hobbits from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> now, thank you that we can do that. Thank you that, as funny as it is, we have a water jug that we can go grab water, or coffee that's outside, or that we're going to go to a place that gives us shelter for the night. Man, thank you for that. What happens when we are just thankful, just for the basic, just the small things that we have that are no less supernatural than anything else? It reminds us of our, of our place. It reminds us that God is God and that we are not that he is the one who provides and cares and loves, and that he is active in the midst of everything that we do and everything that we are. So acts is adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then finally supplication. This is the one that we all jump to before we do anything, making requests or petitions of or to the Lord. We seek God's help. We seek his guidance. We want his intervention. Like Ultimately, what we do is we can we at times can just jump those first three and jump straight to supplication because we think, as the, I've jokingly said throughout the year, that, that Jesus is really my care bearer in the sky. And you poke his tummy and he goes, woohoo, and rainbows shoot from his mouth. And that is what he is good for. He is my care, my care bearer that provides all that I need. When we do that, we have minimized God. We have minimized the work of Jesus and made him into our spiritual butler rather than the Lord of all things. Which, by the way, doesn't mean that we shouldn't supplicate. Which doesn't mean that your prayer of, hey, man, help me on this test today because I'm really struggling. Lord, help me to get that parking spot at Walmart today. Lord, I I really didn't, 
I don't know what's going to happen when I walk into the situation with my family today because it's Mother's Day, which happy Mother's Day to every, all, all the ladies. Um, I don't know what's going to happen because I've got a really complicated relationship with my family. Help me today because I need your power and strength to walk faithfully and just to enjoy the day and not hate it. That's some of us. Lord, I, I, I need, ultimately it's the I need you plea. And thankfully, we have a God who's, who wants us to bring all of those things before us. He doesn't go, hey, that's a bad prayer. That's a bad prayer. That's a bad prayer. He doesn't do that. He goes, hey, child, thanks for coming up and sitting in my lap. This is awesome. And he bought you the ability to sit in his lap with the blood of his son. And now we get to experience that, and we get to adore him, we get to confess to him, we get to give thanksgiving to him, we get to, we get to ask with supplication toward him, all of the saints everywhere. And we get to do this always. And there's a weapon that we have in the fight against not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Because ultimately, the thing, like, when we make it about us, we lose all of our power. But when it's about him and about the victorious one who lives in us, who has given us uh, the armor, he's put on the armor of God, and we take up the, the weapons of victory, when we take those things up, nothing can stand in our way. And we live before him with hope and with life. We aren't those that are down in the depths of despair, but we have our chests up. We breathe in the breath of life, and we trust him that his strength will carry us through and on to the victory. These are the kinds of prayers where life and offense is found. 